Hi, I'd like to welcome Kath Blanchard from Sage Green, an HR specialist. Hi, Kath. Hi, Jonathan. Thanks. For How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. There's some big, important questions going on. Um, how, how has COVID-19 affected your business and, and the world you work in? Well, do you know, the whole world has been turned upside down for everybody, hasn't it? For me personally, I usually work at home anyway. So from that point of view, I've not seen a massive difference. Um, and in fact, I would say that actually it's giving me a broader reach because with Zoom, we're not having to make the same journeys and spend time traveling and so on. But there's been a real shift of emphasis. Uh, all of the general work that we would normally do in terms of advising and guiding employers and looking at policies and procedures, that's all sort of, um, I don't know, flattened for the moment. And we're looking at um, things like home working agreements. It was furlough agreements. That's kind of tailed off a little bit now. And uh, people are obviously starting to put plans in place for returning to work. So a, a very, very different environment, but we're still busy. Very, very busy. Great. Well, that's good, good to hear. So what challenges yeah. do you think business owners have, to, have got to face over the next 12 weeks or so? Right. OK. Um, I think the big one for me at the moment is looking at the social distancing uh, and the safety of employees. That's got to be top of the list. And at the moment, there is a lot of information available for people through lots of different media, lots of different sources. And I think that's some of that is health and safety specific, but I think it's just worth touching on it and being mindful that you've got to have a safe place for people to return to. Uh, you're just gonna be setting yourself up for all sorts of problems as an employer if you're not able to, to reassure your staff that they're coming back to a safe place. Obviously on the back of that, you've got your people that are returning to work or maybe staying at home, home working in the longer term or remaining on furlough leave. So those three issues together are quite complex and quite challenging because of course you can't forget about the people that are on furlough leave. They're still your employees. Mm -hmm. They've still got, um, a contract of employment with you you've still got to maintain communications with them and you've both got still got responsibilities towards each other um following on from when people actually are in the fortunate position about being able to return to work um i think we need to be looking at quite a logistical exercise and that again is going to be challenging in terms of well if we can't have people working closely together and we've got to have that distance between them are we going to need to stagger shifts? Are we going to need to extend the working day so that we can give everybody the opportunity to, to do their required contracted hours? Um, lots and lots of issues there. I mean, in five minutes, I could uh, probably tell you all sorts, but I would really not be able to get to the detail. Very happy to, to talk again on those things if anybody wishes. Well, you've mentioned a few things there about how employees might be challenged. Um, so what support do you think employees will be looking for their employers to provide them? Right. I think I mean, I've touched on it already in terms of support, but that's got to come back in terms of real empathy, because a lot of your people that are uh, working for you at the moment may be struggling with uh, a many number of domestic issues. So bear in mind if you've got people that are coming back into the workplace and this COVID thing is still gonna be with us for some time. So they may be looking after uh, relatives who are shielding. They may have childcare issues. Uh, they may have children that haven't actually managed to go back to school yet. They may be suffering from bereavement. They may be worried about traveling into work. They might not have mobility, so they might not be able to get on a bicycle. Um, so lots and lots of things there that will only become apparent if people are actually are willing to have the conversation with them. And I think sometimes people are quite shy and nervous about uh, having that difficult conversation because mm. they don't want to expose themselves as being perhaps a little bit vulnerable or, or needy. They don't want to sort of uh, raise their head and sort of say to their employer, this is really difficult for me. 
so it's about having meaningful consultations and communications with people um i think they'll be looking for uh the safety within the workplace as well i think that's absolutely paramount and i think we all know how important that is but it's not just um the normal health and safety which has been with us for a long long time there's this added layer yeah. of you know is it acceptable to share equipment desks phones Absolutely. um spaces awesome. in the kitchen yeah all of those things and i think employees are going to be looking for those reassurances and from a legal point of view i think we're going to be looking at whether or not people have been consulted with whether they've been uh, paid properly whether they've been treated fairly all of those things absolutely and i'm sure we've only tipped on the edge of this massive iceberg kath thanks very much for joining us today uh, we're out of time as per usual but uh, very very appreciative of your knowledge and your contact you're, details are there if anybody should need your help you're very welcome thank you for your time take care everyone <laughs>